What's up guys, Iceman here, and in this commentary I'm bringing you guys a little bit of a different type of commentary. I'm going to talk about some real life shit and just some problems that I've been having lately within my family, and oh, where where can I start? Alright, well I want to kick it off with my brother, he's 18, actually 19 years old now. And he's going down a really bumpy path, and I can really relate to him because I went down that same path uh, with drugs and getting in trouble with cops and just not a place you really want to be. And um, I'm trying my best to get him out of that path because he knows that I went down that same path he's going down. And um, he, he just really looks up to me when it comes to advice and life and just everything in general. I, I've always helped him out when I can. He lives about 45 minutes to an hour away. He's actually my half-brother. Uh, we have the same father, different mothers, but I still look at him as my full-blood brother. Um, you know, I, I honestly don't care. He's got a tough life. Uh, his mom is actually dating someone that's my age, so that's really hard. I mean, just imagine growing up. My father, our father, never really, you know hung out with him or contacted him or saw him he never really looked at Andrew that's my brother's name as his son because um, him and Tanya which is my brother's mo mother uh, never really wanted it like that uh, you know the kids were too young we were too young to know what you know it meant to have a stepbrother or a half brother sorry and uh, I didn't find out I had a brother until I was eight years old my dad never really knew how to bring it up to me, you know. I grew up without a brother in my household. How is he supposed to tell a kid one day that he has a brother? Every day I would tell my dad, because I grew up in the boonies with literally, you know, there was no cul-de-sacs, there was no kids coming up to my door, ringing my doorbell asking me to come out and play. You know, I lived out in nowhere, and, it, you know, I always told my dad that I wanted a brother. And one day, I was eight years old, I still remember, he came up to me, he's like, Hey son, you know how you always say that you wanted a brother? And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, you got one. And I was like, what? I was like, well, where is he? He's like, you want to go meet him? I was like, yes. I was like, why are you just now telling me? He's like, I, I honestly didn't know how to tell you, and I feel like eight years old is, uh, you know, you're old enough now to kind of realize what's going on. And, you know, I still didn't understand it fully. But I remember driving to McDonald's, and we met at McDonald's, and me and him played in the ball pit. And I, he he was five years old at the time. I remember pegging him in the face with the with the ball pit ball. But yeah, I didn't really find out I had a brother until I was eight years old. And uh, you know, it, it's just really hard on Andrew because he he's got that you know life where he grew up without a father, and we didn't really stay in contact with him. I only saw him like maybe once every two years or something. His mother really wanted to keep things strictly uh, by the court system, you know. We, the only time they saw each other was when my dad handed her money for child support. My dad paid 18 years of child support, $450 a month, while raising me by himself. Because my mother kicked me out when I was 12 years old for breaking her fish tank. Yeah, I, I don't really know, but, but uh, I, I've had a pretty rough childhood myself. My dad's never really been that father that uh, has really been a you know I, ideal dad. Like, no to drugs, no to drinking. You know, he actually bought me alcohol, and he's smoked weed with me before. Only one time, though, he regretted it. But, uh, you know, my dad is an alcoholic. All he does is drink alcohol. Yeah, actually, I'm going to take that back. All he does is drink straight liquor, two bottles not little tiny, you know, not little tiny quarts. He drinks the full liters, uh, full fifths of, you know, fucking absolute vodka. It's just what I, it just, it's, it's sad, you know. He shoves the bottles under his couch cushions and uh, pulls another bottle out when he's finished with the other one so he doesn't have to move because technically, you know, he really can't move. But uh, on to the topic, my brother has just been really going through hell lately. He's uh, facing... Uh, 20 years over his head, he's got five felonies for car hopping, going uh, car to car and stealing people's credit cards out of their car and stealing money. Yeah, he got caught. Don't do that, guys. Every kid does it. I didn't do it. I, you know, I wasn't one of the kids that stole because as a young age, I, at 15, I had to get a job to pay for my own shit. 
and I worked at Hooters. I wasn't legally able to work at 15, but I was six foot four at 15, and they let me work. So, you know, I know what it is to work for something and get it taken from you because I've got my shit stolen at school. I, I saved up $200 for an iPod my sophomore year, and, you know, some kids stole it out of my fucking locker. And uh, my brother, you know, he really hadn't got a job until he was 18 or 19, just recently. And he had been stealing shit and smoking pep spice, that uh, K2 shit. You know, it's really bad for you guys. All you guys out there that are on colors or getting drug tested and you're smoking that K2, that spice shit, there's different, di there's different chemicals sprayed on that every batch. Every batch is different. It uh, reacts with different people differently. I, I literally went into a, almost a seizure one time that I smoked that shit. And I will never touch it again. If you're going to smoke, just wait until you're off probation or just be smart about it, guys. And you know, A lot of you guys don't know, but that K2, that Pep Spice shit, is uh, considered Schedule 1, which is up there with heroin, you know, meth. If you get caught with Pep Spice... It, it's my you might as well have heroin on you it's that bad so just you guys got if you want a felony ride around with pep spice you'll get one just be careful guys you know i don't want you guys going down the path that my brother's going down uh you know he he pulled out his dick and told his mother to suck his dick and uh told her to fuck off she's kicked him out he has nowhere to live right now he's just going downhill he continues to smoke pep spice and uh i don't you know i really don't know what to do with him but I'm here to try and help you guys. If you guys are going out there smoking pep spice, car hopping, just be smart. Just don't do it, guys. Get a job. Make some money. Make some legit paper. And um, take it easy. It's been real.